Kushi and welcome to my favorite foods. Today, one of my family's legendary, I mean most legendary recipes, a coveted Greek classic moussaka. The best moussaka I have ever tasted is my dad's. So these are all his secrets, all his little tricks. You're gonna have three components. It might seem overwhelming, but you are gonna love this recipe. So let's get started on component one, the meat sauce. So what I like to do is, Brown the meat first before adding the onions. A little bit of olive oil. And ground meat goes in. This is lean beef. You want to break it up with a wooden spoon just so you don't get big clumps. I like to brown the meat first because I can really caramelize the meat. And when you caramelize the meat, you get that extra sort of meaty flavor. If I've added the onions first, they might burn by the time I get that meat the way I want it. This is gonna take about 10 minutes. Now I'm gonna season this with just a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, Now here's tip number one. You would look at this maybe, and I've seen a lot of people do this, and say, okay, I've browned the meat. Have a look at this. It is gray, gray. And since you're gonna go to all the trouble of making this amazing dish, you don't wanna rush these little steps because they're gonna add just really like 50%. Right away, just this, just browning the meat like I'm gonna show you, is gonna add about a 50% improvement. I'm telling you, you're gonna love it. You wanna make sure that you've got a high temperature. It's all about high heat. So after 10 minutes, look at this. You see this little crispy gold, well, almost brown. See that? That is browned meat. Now I'm gonna add onions, garlic, a couple of bay leaves, Greek oregano. And it seems a bit dry, so I'm gonna hit it just a bit of olive oil. And I'm gonna add some more spices to this and herbs some fresh thyme. You can pull these twigs out after. A few cloves. Yes, they're whole. That's how we like adding them. And a whole cinnamon stick. Just a splash of water just to deglaze. Splash. That splash of water just picks up those little brown crusty bits that are all stuck in the bottom of the pan. And because I added the meat first, really the onions are just gonna steam here or sweat. That's gonna take about three to five minutes. Then what I do is I add a little bit of tomato paste. So it's about a tablespoon or so. That's gonna help to bind the sauce. Because the key here is you want a sauce that's rich, but it shouldn't be too loose. Because if it's loose, it's just going to not hold together in the moussaka. I'm using a shortcut here with my already prepared sauce. But if you want, you can just use plum tomatoes. Good quality though, because the tomato is really going to bring this home. The hallmark of a classic Greek tomato sauce with meat is the cinnamon and the cloves. I like using the whole stick of cinnamon because then I can remove it and it's a little bit more subtle. Same with the cloves. Putting it to low, simmering for 30 minutes. While that meat sauce simmers, I'm going to get going on my veggies. Now when it comes to the veggies, my dad's Number two secret was, in a classic moussaka, you would fry all the veggies. I mean, you would probably use a cup of olive oil and it would be swimming in that. So what he always did was bake them. Sometimes he barbecued them or grilled them. Everything gets sort of 
drizzled with a little bit of olive oil. You can season a little salt, a little pepper, and then spreading them out on those trays so that they get nice and crispy where you have the feeling that they've been fried, but really they're baked. And they really absorb a lot less oil that way. And the eggplant typically would be a little baby Italian eggplant, but recently I have found that Asian or Japanese eggplant are incredible because they actually have fewer seeds. I don't have to salt them to draw that bitter flavor that it had. So this is my little addition. I slice them about, I would say, an eighth or a quarter of an inch thick, 375. If you've got convection or a fan in your oven, please use it, it'll be amazing. And you just want to spin the pans around until they're nice and golden. It'll probably take 25 minutes or so. Assembly time. Okay, so now it's when you put this sucker all together. The aroma is amazing. I can close my eyes and I know that I have a Greek meat sauce, my dad's Greek meat sauce in front of me. So assembly. So I'm just going to lay the potatoes down first. I put a little bit of olive oil there. Just a bit. I can't control myself. You can overlap them now actually because you want it to cover the whole bottom of this. Next thing is, and this is Tony's secret number three or trick number three, he divided the meat sauce so it doesn't all go in one layer. Now I'm going to put in a little bit of the meat sauce to cover the potatoes because those potatoes are going to absorb it. See? Smart guy he was. And you can see that it's pretty thick. Look at that baby. I want to make sure it's even. So you have the even amount of meat throughout. Looking pretty sweet. Okay, now veggies. I'm gonna go in first with the eggplant. Just laying them on top, just to cover. I don't need to worry about how they look. Now the zooks, or zucchini. Courgette. And actually my dad could never remember how to call these, that we call them zucchini in English, so he always called them courgette. All right, next layer, meat again, coming your way. Oh, this is beyond ridiculous at this point. It smells so darn good. Look at that. Okay, now the, the final layer is the bechamel. So remember, for the bechamel sauce, you're going to want to go to a whole recipe for bechamel. So find that on my YouTube channel. Then you're going to make the perfect bechamel sauce. Look at that. I've cooled it down slightly. So this is Tony's secret number four. Make it a little bit thick. Now I'm going to add some Parmigiano Reggiano. Doesn't sound very Greek, but Tony loved Parmigiano Reggiano. He spent a fair bit of time in Italy. So he wanted to annoy a few Greeks. Secret number five, definitely Parmigiano Reggiano. I mean, that's sabotage. You can't go to an Italian cheese. Come on. And only add egg yolks. These are not full eggs. The egg yolk gives it a creamier, richer texture. All right, that's a perfect bechamel. I'm gonna lay that on top. So secret number six, what I was saying, is you have to trash the kitchen. My kitchen is actually not bad, but whenever my dad made moussaka, everybody loved it, but the kitchen was an absolute disaster. So I've had friends tell me that they've made this, they absolutely love it, and the crazy mess is worth it. So secret number six, be prepared. Oh, look at that. Oh, that is sucker is heavy. All right, smoothing it out now. This is for Tony here, this last bit. He would really be proud. Last step in the epic moussaka. It's going to go into the oven 
375 for about 40 minutes. I like to do it convection just because it's going to get nice and golden brown. Come on, this is going to be sweet. it. I can't even breathe right now. It looks so good. It smells so good. And as much as I would like right now to cut into that, I must resist because it needs to sit for at least 30 minutes, preferably 40, but at least 30 minutes. We got to see what it looks like inside. totally amazing. That creaminess of the bechamel, I can smell it right away. I gotta take a slice of this. I think this is good for eight pieces. Oh, look at the steam. Oh, and it's perfect. Are you ready? My dad would be so proud. This needs to be eaten right now, hot. Thank you for joining me, and thank you for requesting this because I think it's the perfect recipe. See you next time.